Hi everyone, so welcome to Investing for Value. So if you've been reading the news, you've been talking to anyone in general, um, you'll know how big of a deal a coronavirus is and how fast it is spreading. Like It's getting to thousands of people, um, possibly getting to tens of thousands, and you know, God forbid it gets to hundreds of thousands or even millions. Um, and that's the thing, and there's no cure right now, which is the roaring part, because a lot of people are just trying their best to get a hold of face masks, sanitizers and all that and you know in, in, in particular face masks that there's a lot of disputes about how useful they are actually um, but even those companies are doing really well so I don't really think it's that moral in the sense you should be making money off like face masks because everyone needs it as an essential um, so I prefer not to talk about those companies, but I'd love to talk about the coronavirus cure type companies because if you're focusing on a cure, that's that that's very good, you know. You want to be investing in the good of humanity. Hopefully, they don't charge a fortune for the cure, of course. Um, but first, they got to get a cure first, and this is kind of leading you to an opportunity to invest in these companies. Um, and also, they're just like I don't know if you like. Tr trending companies, so when companies are trending, um, they tend to do really well, it's just like cannabis companies, they did really well when they were trending, um, and in, like mining companies did really well when electric cars were kind of trending, uh, well in, the, in an potential sense because people just push the prices up, and it's the same thing with these companies, people just want to just push the price up because they want to get in there because they think this has a lot of potential um, so why have I got these three companies? Well, these three companies are the ones that you can invest in with an upside. So you could look at Johnson & Johnson, you could look at um, Gil Gilead, uh, but those companies are very large, and if they found a cure for the virus, your upside might not be that upside, because they're such large companies that majority of their products already um, make the most of the company and a virus cure would only add a little bit to the company of course either way if someone can find a cure it's great news of course um, so let's just talk about the three companies that I've got on the board here and how well they've actually been doing recently so I've got this like five day price there um, of where they were so like five days ago we've got Moderna which was at $20.65 it's gone up 10% in about five days, um, though mind you that's including the weekend. Um, and in a sense, we're also looking at a market cap of about $7.58 billion, so it's quite a large um, company in the general sense, though they don't really have that many much revenues, though they've kind of been building this kind of like, um, just a just genetic type database which allows them to create a lot of different type of vaccines they're actually in the works for like 20 different ones um so and they've actually spoken like that um by getting this like database of you know of how gene a lot of different genes and all that um they're actually able to come up with vaccines quicker than most companies because they don't have to start from scratch um, so it's actually, so in a sense, they do have a very high potential of coming up with a cure. Um, and then we've got Nova, Novavax, um, which, is, which was $6.80. Six um, it's gone up to $8.50, and which is about 25%. So you can see the smaller the company, the, you know, a bit more of a gain there is. Like the large ones are moving, but a bit slower. Uh, but a bit more reliable because they do have a billion dollars in cash, whereas Novavax has about, I think, oh, I think it was about seventy million dollars. Um, but they're looking at raising another hundred million. So, but then everyone's kind of like holding back because they're like, oh, if you're raising money, um, that's potentially just going to dilute my shares or someone whoever gets those um, that hundred million dollars of shares, you're just going to flush it into the market. Mind you, this is a three hundred million dollar company. So extra 100 million is a massive dilution. Um, so that's kind of been stopped in its tracks a little bit in terms of what's happening this week. Um, though we're starting from a small base, but uh, of course at 100 million, that's about a $400 million company after that. 
though we need to know how much the capital raising price will be to decide how much of a dilution it's going to cause. Um, and then last off, we have in Invio, um, and they started off at three dollars twenty nine, um, went up to five dollars and thirty two. So this one's been a big, big mover because it's got about a hundred million in the bank. Um, so it's got some money to fund its research, and you know it's at about five hundred and thirty two million dollars in market valuation. Um, so looking at this, it's kind of like we've got the big player, we've got the medium player, and we've got the small player. And so far, the medium one has done well because if you're ch if you're the smallest player, you don't have a lot of like resources, so you can't really move crew quick. So hence why they need to raise a hundred million in in finances just to get things going. Um, and then you've got yeah like MBO that's you know like they've got the funding they're a medium you know the bigger enough size company that they can actually get things going which means you know they've got it which is why the share price has been moving a bit more um of course you know like they in a sense these two were a bit very similar sizing but this one's moved up about 35 percent more um so but i think there's a bit more behind this than this one um, and then we have this large, large company, which is, you know, a gigantic compared to those, those two. Uh, but they've got the quite a lot of potential. So, like, for me, I think these guys are possibly ahead of these two when it comes to getting the, a cure done. Um, especially, I think, Novavax was focused on kind of, like, um you know, kind of like flu type medicines and, but they were focused on like antibiotics rather than antivirals. So the one thing about coronavirus is it need, you need to use antivirals to kind of use as more of a cure rather than antibiotics. Um, but I don't quite entirely know the best way, but antivirals so far out of, uh, is the treatment used by medical practitioners to just like stabilize the condition um, so with, in terms of which ones of these should you invest in um, technically if a stock is trending um, then you you're pretty it's a pretty safe bet to say you can invest in most of most of them well, yeah, like in a sense, you can invest in most of them. And if if the trend, if if the virus gets worse, people do want to gamble on, like the, someone that's potentially going to make a vi like a cure. Um, like mind you, this talk is full speculation because we've got these company. If you invest in biotech, it's all speculation to be honest. Because with science, you can't guarantee the outcome that you want. That's the thing. You can't guarantee outcomes. Um, hence why, like, it's it's all about valuing on potential. If you wanted one industry where speculation would thrive, it's biotechs. So when it comes to biotechs, you don't necessarily value any, like, most of it on, like, revenues on the present time. You evaluate it on the potential of the revenues. Um, so, you know, it's quite a different industry compared to most, which is one thing, like, if you invest in the stock market, you'll get your head around so many different industries, but biotech industry is one that's so different to, compared to those, and evaluations are um, quite a bit, like, far, like, far-fetched, in a sense. So, like, this is why, like, when I look at these, you're not necessarily looking at the current revenues, you're looking at two things. You're looking at resources that they can that they have to continue and to build their products, um, and you're looking at uh, their potential and revenue. So, like future potential. So, if something has a lot of future potential, you tend to pay a lot more for it. Um, so, the fact that these guys could be the, you know, they come up with a potential cure for the you know coronavirus um it kind of means quite a lot and in in any of these three companies could do it or even johnson johnson or jillid so you know like we've got about five companies well probably more than that that are coming up with the cures 
Um, these three have gotten like external funding. Um, even like Moderna has gotten, uh, I think Moderna and Indio have gotten like funding from some of the, like indirectly from Gates, the yeah, Bill Gates Foundation. Um, so they have got a, they've got their own funding and end up being given extra funding. So that's kind of like an extra boost. Um, and judging by how much the coronavirus is spreading, like you're talking about China, who, you know, like their economics is basically, you know, the most important to the country. So for a country to just block cities and stop, you know, like big events like with Chinese New Year, um, there's a ton, there's, it's important, you know, it's, there's a ton of celebrations. But a lot of them actually were shut down. So you're looking at important events that were shut down. You're looking at cities that are blocked off, transport that's shut down. Um, anything that has a big gathering of people, it was just, it's always shut down. Um, so when you consider into that aspect, like all these things that um, the Chinese government has done, um, and it knows that it's causing, you know, it will cause the GDP to drop. It will cause, you know, the economics to drop. And that's one of the most important things to like a country that's in a stage of growth. Um, so you, by, just by that, you can tell how serious it is and how, you know, like how fast this kind of virus is accelerating because it's, it's spreading to so many different countries. Um, even though it's not as deadly as, say, like um, Ebola, SARS, the contagious, um, you know, it's much more contagious. So something that spreads like that, that's that's actually more scary in a sense because it's it could get a large, large amount of the population before anyone can get a control over it. Now, the problem with trying to come up with a vaccine is, like, you're not going to get it immediately. Like vaccines take at least months. Like if in order for you to get a vaccine, you know, you've got all this um, research and development. And then once you even get that, you still have to do your trials on humans and you've got to do multiple trials. You can't just, um, yeah, just put it out onto the street. Um, so the thing is you're going to do a lot of trials and in between those trials, you've got to make sure the patients are okay and then you're probably going to do have to do adjustments so I don't think this cure is going to come too quick um, but I think if you're an investor in stocks um, these stocks have room to move and there's a lot of potential because at the end of the day we're valuing on this potential the more serious this coronavirus gets um, the more need for a cure and the more value these companies are going to build into themselves because on the chance they find a cure um, there's a lot, there's a massive, massive reward in terms of, um, you know, revenue that's going to come in, you know, reputation. Um, there's a lot that's going to be riding on success. So when I s suggest these companies, like, let me rank them for you, like, in terms of my opinion, because at the end of the day, everything that I say can be only my opinion, like, your opinion is going to be different to mine. Um, and my opinion is just my opinion. Like, uh, it can't like I can't necessarily say I'm going to be right or you're going to be right. Um, but it helps to just share perspectives. Um, and so, like in terms of like which one do I have? You know, do I think is probably not the one I would like want to invest in. Like in terms of like, and as you know, like the, I probably wouldn't want to invest in like Novavax for like. Because currently they're going through their raising, which is, you know, they've got a hundred million coming onto the market, and it's going to cause quite a severe amount of dilution. Um, so I wouldn't want to invest in this one until they get this done. So I know the details. I know that it's not going to be sold down immediately. Um, though getting a hundred million at that valuation, um, you know, it's not not too bad because then they flush your cash. Um, so if, if this about $300 million company turns to $400 million, um, it then has more resources than this company, so you might be like, this company's going to catch up with this one, and then, you know, it's got room to move. 
Um, but still, I, I wouldn't invest in this one until I know what the capital raising comes out to be. Um, so this one's also not too... Like, I think this will probably be, you know, the second one. Like, before I get to the verse, which will be moderner. Um, so this one's not too bad. It's got some resources. It's got some stuff built up. Um, and it's at, at a $532 million valuation. So if something's also cheap enough, it it's got room to move um, and this is the large one like you know it kind of con contradicts what I've just said like something small enough it's got room to move but this is quite big but the thing is um, it, it already had a lot of potential built into it before this um, situation so like for a company to be valued around like seven billion um, before this coronavirus cure came into like play uh, means this company already had a lot of potential so it, also, it already means this company is actually quite like there's a lot of potential being built in and it's like potential on potential if you get what I mean um, so that's why I like the stability of this like this has stability this has the potential um, and you know I think it can grow a lot more uh, I don't think it's going to grow as much as this one, like, but uh, mind you, like, one, if things ever fall, they're going to fall with the small ones, the ones that are not as stable as the big players. So if you invest in things, you want to invest in, in a sense, in the big players because, um, you know, they have a bit more stability, um, but you don't want to invest in the, most, the largest ones because there's not much room for gain. So you want to make sure you've got some room for gains. Um, but also has that stability so your risk is not as high um, so that's kind of my thoughts you know I'd invest in Moderna and then in, in uh, Indio and then Novavax so that's probably my order anyway of how I'd rank these um, yeah I mean I think if in a sense you don't have to just choose one like if you are interested in this type of play like mind you it's, it's speculative um, that you could also invest in all three just do an even portion um, and and if things are as I say they're trending values increasing there's some money to be made though once you're on some decent profit don't forget to take the profit because anything could change and things could just well drop um, yeah like I think this is my thoughts anyway uh, let me know your opinion as I always you know value your opinion if you've got any other stocks that you would like me to talk about just post down below um, appreciate you watching the video and good luck with your investing and stay safe most of all you know health is most important you know money is great but health is most important so make sure you look after your health um, probably stay home a bit more make sure you've got your precautions set though you might think this isn't a big deal who knows because a lot of people are comparing coronavirus and going influenza is much worse um so you know there's a lot of different opinions um so uh, you know i'm going to respect all opinions not, not going to debate those um so but i think we should definitely watch how things are going particularly um, as this virus kind of spreads um, but since we're also in, into the stock market we like investing in companies um, there's some three good companies in terms of trending that are good to invest in that's gonna provide it try to do some good for humanity by coming up a cure um, and I hope one of them succeeds and all, all investors do really well out of this um, until that and good luck investing everyone